I want to talk about holograms. Now, a hologram is in concept pretty straightforward. It's when you are able to take all the information in a high dimensional setting, like for example, uh, our three dimensional world, take all that information and project it onto a lower dimensional boundary. Like for example, taking all the three dimensional information in the world around us, projecting it onto a two dimensional boundary and preserving all the information. We don't normally experience holograms because usually when you project from high dimensions to low dimensions, you lose some information. Like for example, the video you're watching right now. I exist in th three dimensions, but the process of this camera capturing that information projects from my three-dimensional world to the two-dimensional lens and it's going to lose some information. For example, you cannot see the back of my head. Not that there's a lot of interesting stuff going on over there, but even if you wanted to, you couldn't see it. But sometimes we are able to make what are called holograms. Holograms are two-dimensional images that preserve all of that three-dimensional information. So if you were to look at me as a hologram, you would be able to walk around me in this chair, see the back of the head, see the back of the chair, look around my office, you know, whatever, do, do everything you want to do because even though it's encoded in this two-dimensional format, that is how a hologram works. A hologram preserves information when you're jumping down the dimensions. Now, let's talk about black holes. Black holes, right? Black holes are three-dimensional things. They're, they exist in three dimensions. They're just, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it. They're three-dimensional things. But here's something interesting. Here's something interesting about black holes. When black holes eat, when stuff, matter, or energy falls into a black hole, the black hole gets bigger. Its mass grows, its volume grows, and its surface area grows. That's Totally not, ex you know, totally expected and totally normal. That's nothing special. Let's reduce it down. What's the smallest amount of stuff that a black hole can eat? What's the smallest thing that a black hole can eat? Let's say, let's say a black hole consumes one bit of information. Let's break it down. Let's ignore particles, matter, energy. Just break it down to, to raw information. So like one particle, one particle actually contains a lot of information. You have its position, its velocity, its mass, its spin, its electric charge. There's a lot of information wrapped up in a single particle. But let's say you have, let's say you have a photon, single photon of light with a wavelength equal to the width of the black hole and it falls into a black hole. That's a pretty reasonable definition of one bit of information falling into a black hole. The smallest amount of information, not the smallest amount of stuff, the smallest amount of information that a black hole can consume. When a black hole consumes one bit of information, its surface area grows by one Planck area. The Planck area is the Planck length squared. So Planck length is that combination of physical constants like the Planck constant, speed of light, I think Newton's G is in there somewhere too. Why not? It's usually tossed around all over the place. To get uh, units, uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters, it's, it's, it's small, it's a very small thing. The Planck length is generally considered the regime. If you shrink down past the, past the subatomic level, past the nuclear level, all the way down, once you're getting in Planck length regimes, you're talking about the quantum gravity, this level. This is where all the forces tend to combine at those very, very, very small scales. That's basically where our knowledge of space-time breaks down, where it enters the quantum regime. You square that, you get an area. Planck length by Planck length, you get a Planck area. So if you add one bit of information to a black hole, its surface area grows proportional to that, that amount of information by one unit, by one unit of the Planck area. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. The black hole volume is growing too, 
but it's the surface area that's proportional to the amount of information in a black hole, not the volume. The surface area is directly proportional to the amount of information inside of a black hole. The volume is not directly proportional to the amount of information in a black hole. That is rather interesting. That suggests, just tossing this out there, that we can consider a black hole, if we really wanted to think about it, not as a three-dimensional structure, but as a two-dimensional surface, as the event horizon itself. It appears that all the business of a black hole happens at the event horizon. You would still fall in. This, do, this doesn't get rid of the physics of a black hole. It doesn't get rid of spaghettification. It doesn't get rid of time dilation. If you were to fall into a black hole, you would fall in, you would hit the singularity, you would not be able to communicate. But from our perspective of the outside observer, from our perspective, it looks like all of this stuff gets glued onto the surface. So in, it's like, if you're gonna eat some, if you're gonna eat a, a slice of pizza, instead of eating it and it going inside you and it increasing your volume, you just tape it to your surface and then your surface gets bigger. That's kind of how black holes work. This provides a potential solution to what's called the black hole information paradox. That's, that's another set of videos. I'm gonna talk about that in a whole different set of videos. Feel free to ask the question down below if you want me to go into the information paradox. But for now, I'm just using it as an example, a case study in this concept of the holographic principle where we can map three-dimensional structures to a lower dimensional, say two-dimensional surface it's just kind of interesting that there's this holographic relationship which appears to hold with black holes. We consider that, can consider them, possibly, possibly. I want to emphasize that. It's, it's possible. This is all very theoretical. It's at the intersection of, of gravity and quantum mechanics. We don't fully understand what all this means. The word even information isn't even very well defined in this context or any context when it comes to quantum mechanics that again that's a whole other show but we might be able to understand black holes in this holographic concept Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.